Hey guys, it's Brickman117. Welcome back to the channel on phase six of the Ultimate Pelican Dropship Mock. I know I don't usually talk over these time-lapse speed build videos, but as this is potentially the last phase of this mock, I decided to do a little bit of talking over the top just to let you know what's going on in this phase and also just explain a few of the things as I go along of what I've been doing as well as trying to answer some of your questions from the previous phase. So in phase six I'll be finishing off the underside of the fuselage where the troop bay meets the rear of the cockpit section. I'll also be creating some front landing gear, reinforcing and modifying the rear landing gear so it can actually support the weight of the Pelican so I don't need that stand that's currently stopping it from toppling over uh, when the rear engines are on. I'll also be creating some weapons for the wings and the nose so I can switch over to a weaponized variant of the Pelican. And I'll also be creating the lift mechanism underneath the tail as it's been left hollow to allow me to come up with some kind of function to make sure it can lift warthogs, scorpion tanks and potentially mantis units as well. Do keep in mind that this is a speed build video. I'm going to do a full overview video off the back of this video where I'm going to discuss the scale. I'm going to show you the scale, how I worked it out for all of you that are concerned about how big it is. I'm also going to show you the inspiration photos that I use for designing it. And we'll go through showing you a weaponized version of it and just the standard version of it. We'll also do a full interior walkthrough and I'll try and answer as many of your questions as I can that I've had throughout the course of the build. So with all that said, let's get stuck into phase six. As you can see, I've had to strip the Pelican right down. I've removed both roof sections, the tail engines, the wing assemblies. Also, I can basically flip it over onto its roof so I can work on the underside of the Pelican. One of the first things I did was to finish off the belly of the troop bay. I'd left this short because you've got to bear in mind the cockpit detaches from the troop bay to expose the armory or the airlock so I hadn't figured out quite how I was going to do that so I left it all partially built. So as you can see before it was just left open so I finished all that off uh, just carrying on as it was. Uh, next I moved on to this bit on the underside which is the basically this isn't exactly how it looks like in any of the pictures. I just used a bit of creative license here. Um, I'm not going to show anyone the underneath of it. It's probably the last time you'll see it. It's not going to be put on its roof. So I just did something that looked okay from a, a side profile. I just wanted the underneath of the cockpit to flow much more gently into the underside of the troop bay. So I did put a bit of effort into it. There's some air vents in there and I've tried to make it look as streamlined as possible but uh, yeah definitely not uh, a true uh, resemblance of the underside of the actual pelican. Next up I modified the rear landing gear to incorporate these braces with adjustable points to attach them to. This was simply because I didn't want the stand to be under the back of the pelican all the time uh, supporting it so by putting these in and some pivot bars or flexible joints into the actual body of the Pelican, I can just spin these down like this, click them in, and they're strong enough to support the, the load on the back now, so the landing gear actually does its job. You do still need those two pylons at the back, but most of the weight is pushed down through those as it's kind of center balanced there, so the actual landing gear just stop it from wobbling backwards and the, the nose gear stops it from going forwards. The reason you haven't seen speed builds for any of this part is because I didn't film it. I wasn't really sure how I was going to go about it so I didn't film it but the rest I have. So with that said we'll jump into a speed build and you can see how I got on.
So more creative license here, I'm afraid guys. Completely made this gun up, but don't really care. Really like it, spins around, goes up and down. So I'm pretty pleased with it. I did actually try another variant where it was able to fold back into the cavity in front of the front wheel there, but it wouldn't go right in. And if that was folded up, you couldn't bring the landing gear down as I'm trying to show you here. Remove that block there, which locks it in so it doesn't drop down. And then you can pull the landing gear down and if you just put a 1x4 plate in, it locks it from going back down and it can't go any further forward. In the end, I decided to bail on the folding gun. If I don't want the gun on, I just pop that plate off of the uh, turntable and just put a standard one in. So that's just about it for the time lapse guys. Uh, you may have noticed I didn't show my build of those ginormous orange bombs. Uh, I wasn't sure whether they're going to work out or not. I really like them. I'm sure they're a bit controversial, definitely not canon, but uh, yeah, I really, really like them. They're just used from the fuel cells of the countdown set. So yeah, I'm going to leave those on, I think. Looking at the Pelican now as an overview of what we've done on phase, phase six, you can see I've used a lot of those support braces from the uh, countdown sets as well, just to uh, fill out the underside of the Pelican there. And there's also some of the Sabre pieces there, those silver bits, they're from the Sabre. The black unit hanging down pivots up. That's my version of a magnetic clamp to lift the vehicles with. Obviously it doesn't, it's, it's not magnetic, but it's to try and give that appearance that it would lift them using magnets. There are actually some arms that I've incorporated into there that can just hook onto the vehicles with clear plastic rods, which I will show you when I do the overview video. Um, 
don't worry about the filming at the moment. If you're getting a bit confused, I've filmed this upside down. So the Pelican's still on its roof at the moment, on the desk, but I filmed it upside down because it was just impossible to show you all this um, very easily if I put it back onto its right side up, as it were. So yeah, I just filmed it upside down, so it might spin you out a little bit. Moving on, we can take a closer look at these braces I made for the landing gear. As you can see, they can stay on there permanently. You don't have to detach them if the wheels or the landing gear is in the upright position, but they just pivot down, clip into there. Depending on how far you want them to come down, depends on which hole you put in those one of four holes you can put in those, uh, those side build blocks. So both of them have them, so yeah, you can adjust it down either either to have the legs going really far down or not so far down, depending on how many blocks you want underneath uh, those pylons that I mentioned. And as I said earlier, there's not a huge amount of load on there. It's just more of a balance to uh, stop them. Those two pylons, the light gray and dark gray on the bottom, that's what takes all the way to the Pelican. I will have to leave those on permanently, but I'll probably get some transclear blocks and just replace them with those so they're not as obvious. I just haven't got around to that. So moving on to the front landing gear again, as I say, you just pop that block out, pull the wheels down so that can take the weight of the front. But again, it's just more of a balance to stop it dropping. Obviously, if you want the front landing gear down, you want it in landing position, you have to take that gun off and you just put a blanking turntable plate on there and then there's enough clearance on the nose. So you can only really have the gun on if you're gonna show it in flight mode. And that's phase six. So. As I said earlier, there will be a follow-up video to this going through all the features of the Pelican. I should have that with you shortly. I just want to say at this point, thanks to everyone for all the support and all the great comments that you've had. I really do appreciate everything that you guys have done to follow this build. It really does mean a lot. Also, if you prefer this style of video with the time lapses where I talk a bit over it as well, do let me know in the comment section if there's anything else you'd like to see on these videos, by all means, post a comment. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.